Hello, hello, hello. I am Nikki the Great coming at you again with another message. And in this evening's message, it's going to be a little shaky for me. I'm going to go ahead and be transparent with you because we're going to be talking about the book of Revelations, okay? We're going to be talking about the book of Revelations. And when I was a kid, um, when people would talk about the book of Revelations, they would talk about it as being scary, okay? Not only Revelation, but they would also talk about the book of Daniel being scary. And so when I was growing up, when I would study, I would kind of skip over those two until here in the last couple of years, I've reconsidered other people's opinions of these two books. I want to share with you some things that I grab from the book of Revelation, and hopefully it will enlighten you up a little bit. Okay, um, let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, your word is life to me, O oh Lord. You are the light of our world, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for this evening, Lord. I ask you to be with me in a special way, Lord, as I'm sharing um, with the viewers, oh Lord, I should be with them in a special way as well, oh Father God. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase, oh God. I'm so grateful and so thankful for the opportunity, oh Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you allow me to be an earthly vessel, Lord, to to share with to share with people, Lord, about you. You know, I do pray, Amen. Okay, I remember many times this happened several times. I'm sure it's happened to you a couple times too. Watching a movie, right? And you know how your friends or someone that you know say, man, you've got to really see this movie. And so they've seen it, but you really haven't seen it. And so like in the beginning and in the middle, when the movie gets like really, really good, you ask them like, what's going to happen? Is this person going to die or is this person going to come back or is there going to be a part two? And you're really on the edge of your seat and you know the person that you're with already knows the outcome. So they'll kind of give you hints to kind of ease your 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 anxiousness about the ending of the film. You know, I look at the book of Revelation the same way. OK, I look at the book of Revelation the same way. It's like living the life that we're living now. We already have a friend that's already seen the outcome. They've already seen the movie. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They already know what's fixing to happen. So no matter what the beginning or the middle of the movie looks like, that person already knows what is going on. And in the book of Revelation, John, the Apostle John, is telling us what's fixing to happen. And I'm sharing that with you because of what's going on in the world today. There is a lot going on in the world today. And I hear people say, oh, the end of times is at hand. And it is. And things are just getting worse and worse and worse. And it kind of leaves some people feeling like, man, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? Am I going to make it? Am I strong enough? Am I too weak? There's a lot of questions that are that are being you know that are being raised but i'm here to tell you we are watching this unfold with someone that is sitting next to us that already knows the ending from the beginning okay so let's go on ahead and get into it i'm so excited and i want to share with you the passion that john john experienced in this in this revelation okay in the book of revelation god is doing one thing he is revealing something so i believe that people re refer to the book of revelation as revelations okay there's a revelations it's there's a lot of things going on what actually is a great revealing all right that's probably what i should have called this the great revealing but we're talking about the, what is what is being revealed here, okay? And so I don't want you to look at the book of Revelation as being scary, okay? I want you to look at it as a guide to us watching a movie and the guide already knows what's fixing to happen, okay? So if you already know what's fixing to happen, wouldn't you be relieved? Wouldn't it give you some type of comfort instead of approaching it um, in fear, okay, and we're we're gonna talk a little bit about this how it can be scary, okay. So if you're reading the contents of the book of Revelation, there's a lot of kind of like riddles, there's a lot of kind of parables, there's a lot of little things, representations. There's dragons, there's a woman, there's these colors, there's a lot going on, and kind of it kind of makes it kind of difficult to make heads or tails of it. But what I want you to do before you get into studying the book of Revelation is go ahead and pray. Lord, and, and tell God about 
about, I guess, the, the, the ignorance in a polite way. Lord, I don't understand this. Lord, what do these things mean? And don't take other people's perceptions with you into the book of Revelation when you're studying it, okay? So don't take what your mama said, what your auntie said, what, the, what your old pastor said. Go into it with your own, with, with a clear mind so that God can pour can pour information into you, okay? So that you can be a thinker for yourself. You wanna be able to think for yourself and study for yourself, okay? Now, if you're going to war, all right, and you've got your men with you, you've got your women with you, and you had the opportunity to know what was gonna be the outcome of the war, would you not wanna know that? You say yes, yes, we would like to know that. So the book of Revelation is the exact same way. All right, so we're going to war. We are in this war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And sometimes, especially nowadays, you think that these principalities, like they got a leeway on us, but they don't, all right? They do not have a leeway on us. There is the power of God that is still reigning high. He is still looking low. He is still in the business of answering prayers. He's still in the business of listening to us. He's still in the business of wanting to expose us to his word. And the book of Revelation is such a beautiful, beautiful thing, all right? Um, there, there are beasts, there's a dragon, there are things that are represented. I'm not going to go through all the details. You're going to have to read it for yourself. Okay. But there is, there is like, there's these beasts and there's these creatures that are, that are talked about in the book of Revelation. And when it comes to, when it comes to not just in the book of Revelation, but in other uh, passages of the Bible, they'll, they'll mention these things. Okay. And what that is, is there's a representation in the spirit world. And these, these demons, these devils, the, our adversary, they're represented as being these creatures, okay? And so they were talking about the dragon. We're talking about the kingdom of darkness, okay? That's what they're talking about. They're, he's talking about the kingdom of darkness, okay? And um, there is good news, okay? So before you get into it, you get all scared, there is good news at the end. I'm going to go on ahead and be that friendly guide to you. But before we dive into Revelation, Let's talk about who wrote Revelation, okay? John the Apostle wrote the book of Revelation, and he he went through a lot with pushing the gospel and furthering the ministry, all right? And so in the spot that he wrote the book of Revelation, he was in exile on the island of Patmos, okay? He was in exile. He was in a really, really, really bad place. He basically was punished for sharing the word of God. He was punished for believing in Jesus. He was punished for pushing the message and pushing the gospel. So for, for his punishment, he was exiled to Patmos. Now today, Patmos is different. It's a beautiful place. People go there. It's known for John the apostle. But back in the day, the Isle of Patmos, the island of Patmos was a desolate, rocky place. Okay. It was physically a desolate, rocky place that John was placed at okay and that is where god revealed himself god revealed himself to john to write and to share for us today okay and something that just hit my spirit is that sometimes god sends us to a rocky place sometimes god sends us to a desolate place sometimes we are spiritually in a place where we don't understand a place that's got no life a place that a place that we struggle but i'm here to tell you that sometimes god has to isolate us from people he's got to put us in a supposed exile to reveal himself to reveal what he has for us and that's exactly what john went through on the isle of patmos okay god revealed himself in the most beautiful the most eloquent the most poetic way let me go on ahead and um and share that with you. He shared three really, really big things, a part of this great reveal. God revealed himself in Revelation, okay? God tells us who he is in Revelation 1.8. He gives us like an introduction of who he is, all right? And then how he is coming, he also revealed. And he also revealed that he is returning for his people to come and get us. He paid a price for us, okay? So he's coming to get us. And it, it falls into, I, I talk a lot about the spirituality. I talk a lot about the kingdom of darkness. I talk a lot about um, spirits and devils and demons. And one thing about, I, ha I have a video I talked about um, magic and what magic is. There's a price that is paid 
for practicing magic. I'm going down a little bunny trail real quick, so bear with me. There's a price that is paid for magic, okay? So if you engage in this, this ideology of magic, you have to pay the kingdom of darkness something. And usually the cost of it is way more than the actual thing that you're getting. But you see, when, when God sent his son down here, Jesus, to die on the cross, he paid a price for us. So we don't have to pay it. You see what I'm saying? But when when the kingdom of darkness, when they, when when he, when Satan, whoever you want to mention, you know, Lucifer, whoever you want to call him, we have to, we we have to pay him a price for anything that he does for us, okay? And he takes from us and he destroys from us, but God already paid that price for us. He's already paid the token for us, all right? And he gives what he has to us freely. And in the book of Revelation, he is reminding that, reminding us that he has already paid the price. He has already bought us. We are already his, okay? And so in the and so in this book of Revelation, he constantly reminds us of that. And also he reminds us, he reminds us that he who has an ear, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear. In the first couple of chapters, John has written that many, many times. He who has an ear, let him hear. Okay, God has given us ears, okay? Not just audible ears that we can hear, but also spiritual ears so that we can hear, okay? So a lot of times we're finding ourselves in a weird place, especially with life and with distractions, but God wants us to you, listen to me. He's saying, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I am coming again. And in the book of Revelation, he wants us to continue to listen, continue to listen, continue to pay attention to what's going on. And um, it can speak volumes to you if you sit there and study it. Don't just read it one time. Read it a couple different times because when we're reading it a couple different times. We're able to be exposed to different things. All right. And we're able to and not let's not go into it by ourselves let's go into it with somebody else and so it's nice to have somebody else with their perceptions hold help me holy spirit with their perceptions with their feedback so we can kind of like bounce ideas and stuff like that off each other okay but um i want you to think of when when the, the scary part of back to revelation the scary part of when it talks about this great dragon and what it does and how many heads it does it how many heads it has it gets really really intimidating Okay, and I want you to think about, okay, the virus Ebola, right? And so how Ebola has to have a host in order for it to live. But the only thing about Ebola is that the reason why it doesn't have, I guess, a long life is because it destroys its victim way too quick. And so when it destroys its victim and it kills them, I, you know, sadly, is that it has to move on very quickly. You see, one thing about, about, about salvation one thing about god is that he's here to sustain us all right he's not here to rob us of our life he is life giving not life taking and with the kingdom of darkness is the the dragon and the the heads of the dragon it is very intimidating but when you think about the power that we already have and you already know the outcome you don't have to be scared of the dragon you don't have to be scared of, of darkness you don't have to be scared of the end of times because in his word in revelation it tells you hey i come again and my reward is quick as i come again quickly and my reward is with me so let's take that into consideration and another thing that we can draw from john is that he was listening he made himself available. Are you listening? Are you making yourself available? With, with, with us, there's a lot of distractions. I mentioned distractions a lot because there is so much that our adversary throws at us to get us off track and to remove the goodness of God, to remove the blessings of God, that when it comes to, when it comes to John actually listening, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes God has to put us in on the Isle of Patmos for us to listen. He's got to remove distractions. So sometimes you have to re you have to remove things from your life, okay? And you do that with the prompting of the Holy Spirit, okay? And this book of Revelation is a is a product of John removing himself or or opening his his ears up to listen to what God has to say, okay? Um, this also, and what God is revealing is the plan for the children of light. And he's also telling us about the danger, about what is going on. God doesn't want us to be ignorant, okay? He reveals who Satan is. The, uh, he reveals the dragon. He re he's revealing darkness. And there was a point in time where I wasn't familiar with the kingdom of darkness. There was a point in time where I didn't know about these things. 
And so sometimes things sneak up. You don't know what's happening. You know, you think that, you know, there's a perception of, oh, this is a cause and effect of life. And really there are darts being thrown. There are principalities up against us. So the more you know, the more you know, the better that you do. All right. So just like just like John was used to write the book of Revelation, there is a great reveal within you. There's a great reveal within you. God has something for you to do. God has something for me to do. Okay. And are you listening? Are you listening to the voice of God? Sometimes he might say some things that you don't like. <laughs> he might say some things that you just don't agree with. But are you listening? I'm sure that when John was getting the instruction, he came across some things that he didn't like. Some things that were unsettling. But he continued to listen. Okay. All of us have a part to play in this gospel. Just like John, he had a huge part to play in the gospel. Let's not think of John as being so great and mighty that he was greater than us and that we can't possibly be on the same lines as John. All of us have a part to play, okay? And I want us to, to think about what our part is to play a part of this big reveal. Not only is the book of Revelation revealing God himself, as we are reading the book of Revelation, as we are reading and studying the book of Revelation, we are playing a part of revealing God to other people. We are playing a part of telling other people about Jesus, about salvation, and about God coming again. So in closing, hello everyone. In closing to, with this, I want you to take home four things that I want you to think about um, with being a, a revealer of God, being a revealer of the gospel, okay? We're gonna remove the things in our life with the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we're going to be listening for the Holy Spirit and removing things that he asks us to remove. And we're going to respect it. Whatever he tells us to remove, we're going to have to respect it and go ahead and get it done. Because there's a bigger picture that he sees that sometimes we just don't see. Okay, and we're going to do those, do those removals through the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Okay, number two, we're going to say no to excuses. We are going to say no to excuses, no to excuses. And our excuses can be big or small. They can come in any shape, form or fashion. We're going to say no to excuses. OK, number three, we are going to accept our value in the kingdom of God and we are going to know our position. We are going to accept our value in the kingdom of God and we're going to know our position. So we're going to say no to thinking of ourselves as not being as big as this person or not having the voice of this person or not being as eloquent or being a stutter or whatever excuses that people come up with. We are going to accept our value that God paid the price for on Calvary and we're going to receive that position and we are going to be a part of this great reveal. Okay. And this probably should have been the first one. We're going to ask God for guidance. Lord, show me how can I be a part of this great reveal? How can I be a part of it? What do you need me to do to be a part of this great reveal? Okay, Lord, show me what my assignment is. We're going to pray, Lord, show me what my assignment is. Show me what my purpose is. Okay, all of us have a purpose. All of us have assignments that are assigned to our purpose. But in order for us to walk in that, in order for us to grasp it, we have to we have to listen like John was. We have to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and we have to respect those promptings of the Holy Spirit. OK, and we can't allow other people's perceptions of what's what is scary to you might not be scary to me. OK, and what is scary to me might not be scary to you. So we're going to go into the book of Revelation. We're going to go into that with an open mind. We're going to go into it as a love story. OK, it's a love story and it's a it's, it's God introducing himself to us. OK, God introducing himself to us. I know it's kind of late. Thank you so much, you guys, for pulling up. I appreciate it. I am Nikki the Great again, and together we are growing, sharing and thriving.